In a recent video we published, you guys in the comments section requested that I take a look at the NIMES driver package set. Now this driver package set is actually pretty special for a good reason, and that is it enables cards like this HD7970 to get the latest driver support from AMD. Even though earlier this year, AMD stopped supporting cards like the HD7000 series, the 200, 300, and even the R9 Fury series, which left a lot of gamers frustrated in that they didn't want to go out and buy a new graphics card, especially given the prices of newer graphics cards at this point in time. And since a lot of these graphics cards are still perfectly capable of even playing the latest titles, so it made sense that something like the NIMES driver set exists to this date. And the first biggest benefit that we're going to point out before we get into the gaming benchmark numbers is that some games will now be able to load. In the case of the games that we're testing here today, Forza Horizon 5 would not boot on the 7970 until we installed these custom drivers, and I was able to play the game. However, if you are hoping for a massive uplift in performance in certain titles, then perhaps this driver set isn't the magic bullet that you're looking for. Let's take a look at the numbers right after this sponsor spot. Get rid of this annoying activate windows message then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered for as little as 12 US dollars after you enter that coupon code BFTYC you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today links in the description below Welcome back to Tech Yes City and the HD 7970 is perhaps some would argue and I personally would argue that it is the greatest graphics card for PC gamers of all time in that it was released over nine years ago and it's had the longest running driver support having the driver support stop in 2021 midway this year. So the first thing we did in today's video was I ran some benchmarks with five different titles and then after that I then downloaded the custom package and what I did was I followed a tutorial from another YouTuber who put it all in Russian but they did have English subtitles and basically what you do is you do an AMD clean uninstall. So you uninstall all your previous AMD drivers and then you start again whilst loading in a custom file in the AMD dependencies folder. Then after that, you should be okay. And in Windows, you should see that you have December's latest drivers installed. But in the case of the 7970, it actually came up as an R9 280. And we will show this in the benchmark numbers here today where I actually had to manually change it to an R9-280X to get it to run to the numbers before we installed these custom drivers. So unfortunately, at least in Age of Empires 4, we had lower FPS when we initially installed this driver set. And then after we changed it to a 280X, we got pretty much the same FPS. However, it was important to note that the 1% and 0.1% lows were slightly better with the custom modded drivers. And another thing we did notice with Age of Empires 4 was that the error message that came up before we installed these custom driver sets, basically telling us that we got legacy drivers. The next title was Forza 5. Now, as we said in the intro, this just flat out refused to boot with the original drivers that we had installed. But then after we installed the custom drivers, we could get this game to run. Although the performance wasn't that great. Well, we came in with 25 average FPS, and then we came in after that with 28 average FPS after we changed it to a 280X. The next title is Back for Blood. Here's where we got 49 average FPS with, of course, an error message booting up with the 7970 install. And then after the custom driver set, we actually dropped down to 40 and then 47 respectively. So with it recognized as a 280, we're getting 40 average FPS. Then as a 280X, we got 47 average FPS. However, the 1% and 0.1% lows were actually significantly higher on the 280X custom modded driver set this time around. Then moving on to New World, here's where we got the 280X coming with the best numbers as opposed to 7970, and then that beat out the 280 default install numbers on the NIMES driver software package. New World also managed to get rid of the error message just like the previous three titles that we tested. Then for the last game on benchmark here is Strange Brigade, where we went from 53 FPS to 53 average FPS, and then as the default 280, it was running at 46 average FPS. So with those gaming numbers aside, unfortunately it does seem like the AMD fine wine technology has come to an end in 2021, at least for the GCN architecture. But the biggest benefit I noticed that came out of this NIMES driver software install, of course, was getting rid of the error messages and the compatibility of the card, which worked a lot better after we installed these drivers than before. But as we saw in those benchmarks, the extra FPS just really wasn't there. The one thing I will stress about the 7970 is even though we tested at 1080p high settings, 
If you can get these newer driver sets and then drop the settings to 1080p low or even medium, you can get a nice smooth 60 hertz playable experience on pretty much all the titles that we showed here today, with the exception of Forza Horizon 5, which is actually very demanding from the initial benchmarks that we ran here today. And there's probably one more thing that people will say is, well, if you can afford all these titles, then why wouldn't you just go out and buy a different graphics card? And the funny thing about three of the titles here today is that they're all included on the Xbox Game Pass, which is actually pretty cheap to pay every month. And so there's a lot of people there who just wanna play games and they won't wanna go get ripped off on the new GPU prices in that current situation. So keeping onto your old cards and getting the most out of them is still viable. And this is still a good little trick, but it won't get you that extra FPS. And that's something that I have to stress, at least from the testing that I've done here today. Anyway, with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comments section below, do you have a different GPU like an R9 380 and you've tried this NIME software package and you've had perhaps a better experience or a different experience? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And of course, if you guys have requests for content like this, since the last time you guys requested this one, it got actually quite a lot of upvotes. So if you guys really wanna see a particular piece of content, then be sure to let us know in the comments section below. In terms of installing these custom drivers, I'll just put the link to the Russian uh, person's install tutorial, which was very straightforward, even though it's translated. You pretty much just download three different files, uninstall your old drivers, install the new drivers, and you are good to go. Though do let us know below, love reading those thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Edwin K. And they ask, can you make a video about the tricks of a hardware tester? How do you install Windows 10 and do you download the Steam games every time or is there a Steam SSD? So basically when it comes to testing, I don't know how other people do it, but I've got two different uh, two terabyte SSDs. One of them is an Intel platform SSD. The other one is an AMD AM4 platform SSD. And so once I start, say for instance, benchmarking GPUs on the Intel platform, I'll run through the NVIDIA numbers then do a complete driver uninstall, then run the AMD numbers or vice versa. But I think you don't wanna mix the platforms like the Intel and the Ryzen platforms that can spell problems for your FPS. But in terms of the GPU drivers, as long as you do a complete uh, DDU uninstall, get rid of everything on that particular side, then do a fresh install of your drivers, you should be good to go in terms of your gaming numbers. But in terms of re-downloading the games off Steam, I live in Australia where the internet, at least where I live, is still pretty piss weak. So unfortunately, I have to get around that by having all the games pre-installed because I don't have to spend days and days re-downloading games. Anyhow, hope that answers that question and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.